Hello everyone and welcome. Kerbal Space Program does feature a communication system which encourages you to have a communication link with the Kerbal Space Center. Unfortunately, it's entirely possible for a celestial body to block that link. And the absence of that communication link will affect your ability to control uncrewed probes, as well as your ability to transmit science. The solution to this problem is the construction of a relay network. A system of satellites that will take that signal and relay it back to the Kerbal Space Center for you. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. How to construct such a network around a celestial body. And we're going to be looking at how to do it the easy way. Specifically, our target is going to be Minmus, and we're going to be putting a system of three satellites equally spaced in a circular orbit with an altitude of 377.035 kilometers. Why that specific altitude? Well, I happen to have a video which goes over the math and helps you decide what would be a good altitude for your relay satellites. But this video is going to be about how to get them there. We're going to be taking all of the satellites to Mimis in just a single vessel, and we're going to be putting that vessel into a very specific orbit, which will allow us to drop these satellites one by one and ensure that they are equally spaced in the orbit that we want. Let's get started by meeting our relay satellite. So as you can see here, it is an extraordinarily simple thing. It's just a, a hex probe core surrounded by solar panels, a bit of a battery, and then two of these HG-5 high gain antennas, which should be able to communicate easily with Kerbin and also communicate with a vessel around Minmus or on the surface of Minmus with just a single communitron on it. It's only powered by an ant engine and only has 104 meters per second of delta V. And in fact, that is way too much. It actually will only need a tiny fraction of that less than a tenth of that really but the problem is is when i put on the smallest fuel tank that i got and turned down the fuel <laughs> i just got tired of turning down the fuel and there really wasn't much advantage of taking even more fuel out of this but uh just this tiny amount of fuel on this tiny little probe already gives me over 100 meters per second which again is about 10 times more than what it really needs but the real workhorse of this little enterprise is going to be this ship right here, which is responsible for carrying our three satellites out to Mimis. I ended up using just a tiny spark engine to push this thing along. Never use an engine that's bigger than what you need. Try and keep that payload mass as small as you can. All told, this thing has 1,448 meters per second of delta V once it was all loaded with its three satellites, and that's enough for it to get out to Minmus, insert itself into the required orbit that we need, and when all is said and done, it will have a heroic death deorbiting itself and crashing into the surface of Minmus. And although this is something I have talked about before in more detail in a previous video, I don't think this is a bad place to go over how do you get those three satellites all stacked like that in this fairing. So let's go back to my just completed relay satellite and what we're going to do is we're going to use the sub assembly feature to make this into a sub assembly that we can copy into other vessels. But before we do that, we need to make sure the attachment node for that sub assembly is what we want it to be. We do that very simply. We simply grab a decoupler, any of them will do, and put it on in the way in which we want this thing attached in the final vessel. Then we use the reroute tool to make that decoupler the root part. And then after that, we can simply grab our satellite and drop it into the sub assembly drop zone. We'll give it a name, I called this one Minmiscom, and simply save it. Now we need to get our fairing ready, and we do that by making sure that we have the interstage nodes toggled on. Then it's very simple, we simply grab the decoupler that we want, we put that onto our fairing, we go into the subassembly zone, we find our Minmiscom, and simply plunk it in there like we would put in any other part. If we want three of them, all I did here was hold the Alt key and Alt click. We'll just copy that whole assembly, put that on to the next interstage node, and then one more time to have all three of them, and that's it. That's all there is to it. 
as our destination is Mimmus, I made sure to launch at one of the equatorial nodes of Mimmus's orbit and made sure that I ascended into a parking orbit with a six degree inclination, thus matching the plane of Mimmus's orbit, which will make our transfer out to Mimmus all that much easier. I talked about all this in a previous video if you want to see this done in more detail. As for this lifter, once again, no new principles to be seen here, though I did take that idea from a couple of episodes ago of reducing the thrust during the upper part of your ascent to keep that apoapsis from getting too far away from you. And even if you don't want to go through the bother of reducing and fiddling around with your thrust, which I completely get, sometimes I do the same thing, I just want to get into orbit and get her done and get on with the mission, the realization that you don't need that much thrust in the upper part of your ascent can affect your design. In this case, the upper stage is being pushed by just a little terrier engine and it's doing the job just fine. Once you're up about 50 kilometers or so, for all practical purposes, you might as well consider yourself being in a vacuum and you can switch to these high efficiency but low weight vacuum engines that the game gives you. And that low weight allows you to get much more out of your boosters than you otherwise would. And while we watch this thing finish off its orbital insertion, I'm going to take this opportunity to welcome aboard our newest patrons, Cobb Champingsworth and Deinonychus. Thank you very much. It is the support of you and all of my patrons that keep me inspired to make a new video every single week. Now what we're going for is eventually our satellites are going to be in a 377.035 kilometer orbit above Mimis's surface. That number is very specifically picked to give us an orbital period of 12 hours. The short of this is that you want to have a period that you can remember and as we'll see very shortly, having a period that's divisible by three also really helps. So we'll just sort of set our periapsis here to 377.035 or as near as we're going to get it. This burn should be nothing but prograde. There's a very good chance you will need to make a mid-course correction on your way to Mimis in order to get the periapsis close to where you want it to be. That is completely normal. You not only want to get the periapsis where we said it would be at 377.035 kilometers, but you also want to have the periapsis as near as you can tell above Mimis's equator. I got really lucky and got close to that position just from this injection burn and so didn't make a mid-course correction and decided I'll just tweak the position once I got into Mimis's sphere of influence. So right here I am burning normal to try and get my inclination as low as it can be. 1.8, I have a feeling that's as low as I'm going to get it yet. If you want to zero this out closer to Mimis, you can, but it's not necessary. We also want this to be... 377.035, which means it needs to be a little higher. And we accomplish that by burning radially outwards. And that is the little blue, that's the one that's radially in with the lines going in. So we're gonna go to the other one. There's the radially outwards one. And again, right now my thrust is very, very low. And we're gonna burn this to 377.035 or as close as we have patience for. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our capture, but we don't wanna capture right into our final orbit. You're gonna see how this works in just a little bit. What we want to do, remember that our final orbit's gonna have a period of 12 hours. We would like what we're gonna call our phasing orbit, our orbit that we're gonna to use to drop each of those satellites off to be one third of that period off. So if you take 12 hours and you divide it by three, you get four hours. You can either add on that four hours to get a period of 16 hours or subtract off that four hours to get a period of eight hours. Both ways will work, but it actually is a little bit more energy efficient given that we are coming in for a capture to just leave our apoapsis out higher. So we're gonna go for a bigger period of 16 hours. 
This I worked out to be an altitude for the apoapsis of 561.83 kilometers, but the game actually kind of helps you out here because if we take a look here, we got some maneuvering information. If we go to our first orbital information tab, notice that it's giving us a period. And it's giving us a period of this projected orbit. Notice here how the apoapsis that I selected, 816 kilometers, matches this. So in fact, I really don't have to pay attention to apoapsis. It's period that's most important. I want a period of 16 hours. Now, a Kerbin day is six hours, so two days would be 12 hours, so it's two days plus four hours more. And you can see I'm very close to that right now, so I'm just going to, let's, uh, we would love it to be zeros all the way across for the minutes and the seconds. Turn the scale down as far as it'll go. Oh, that's as good, that's as, good as it's going to get for now. You can see, actually, I'm not quite on... See how these two periapsi don't match? That tells you that you're actually not quite on the periapsis. So if you adjust the timing here a little bit, there we are. That's a little bit better. What did that do to my period? It knocked it off a smidge. Can I tweak that any even better? Not really. <laughs> okay, there we go. Well, now what's required is for us to do that burn. And as we approach this burn, don't forget the thing I'm most interested in is the period so I got it selected so I can watch that right now it's saying infinity because we are still on a hyperbolic trajectory out of here but that should start being a number very soon let's start I'm just keeping this locked on to retrograde so all I'm thinking about is thrust as this comes down we haven't quite got our capture yet we should very very soon Reduce throttle. There it is. Okay. Let's reduce throttle. Watch that period. Okay. So there's down to three days. Two days. And there's no rush. Take your time. Okay. So we're down to two days, four hours, and 37 minutes. I'm going to use this opportunity to reduce that throttle limiter once more. So you can really get some fine control. You want this to be as close to your target as you can. There it is, two days, four hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. Okay, that is exactly what we want. So, let's release our first satellite. So we're gonna go aim our camera up here. Let's activate the antennas and stuff, which I put on two for an action group, so that we have to make sure that this thing has a, uh, a signal here. And then we're going to Release this satellite by decoupling that. I turn the decoupling force right down to zero so that there isn't any kick on that to mess up its orbit. And we're going to burn in a retrograde direction, now going down for our target period. So let's just burn. And again, not a rush. Don't. It's amazing how much time you can spend just fiddling. You can see how little this takes. I overcooked it. No big deal. Go around. Uh, let's put that thrust limiter down again. 0 0.5. Oh, it's very low now. There we are. Beautiful. And take a look at our first relay and admire it, but we don't have much time to admire it. What we're going to do now is get ready to drop our second one. We put our one relay into this final orbit here. We would like our another relay to end up exactly in this same orbit, but we don't want it in the same place. We want it a third of an orbit away. Remember in the end, we want three satellites that are all equally spaced apart on this orbit, each of them a third of an orbit away. That's why we affected this period by making it a period that's a third more. So let's start time warping. You'll see how this works. So. Remember that our outside orbit here has a period that is one third more than the period of this. So this thing is going to do an orbit and then it's going to do one third more of an orbit by the time this one gets back down to periapsis and all this should time out perfectly. Let's turn on all of our communication lines so we can see them. I mean, communications is what this is all about. You can see these two satellites are talking to each other. 
So we're going to wait until this guy gets pretty close to periapsis, not quite there. You can see how this is working. We are now going to stop a few minutes early. Because I want to talk about something. All right, we're about five minutes from our periapsis. We're going to get ready to drop our other satellite. But these two should now be one third of a circle separated. We call this angle, by the way, this angle that uh, between them, the phase angle. And we're going to talk about phase angle more in our next episode. But Kerbal does give you the ability to measure that. If we take this guy and we uh, set it as a target, not that we're going to rendezvous with it or anything. And then we go over here to our approach tab. You know, we have our distance and all this kind of stuff. But look down here. We have our phase angle of 119.5. Not quite the perfect 120, but certainly good enough for our purposes. As for the rest of this, well, it's just rinse and repeat. As we get towards the periapsis of our phasing orbit, we drop another satellite. We point it retrograde. We burn a little bit to get its period period down to that target of 12 hours and then we just go around one more time and finally drop that third satellite doing the exact same thing again actually an alternative to all of this is to actually make the transfer vehicle into that third relay satellite all you have to do to accomplish that is to put on a couple of those relay antennas onto the actual transfer vehicle itself. But I don't know, in my eyes, that's a pretty ugly relay satellite. So I was more than happy to just point it retrograde once its job was all done and heroically burn until its trajectory was crashing into Mimis's surface. And whenever I do a video where I do something like this, I often will get comments saying, oh, you're going to have to spend so much time maintaining this because as time goes by, because the orbits aren't perfect, they're going to drift a little bit. But honestly, I've got games that have gone for several game years where I've not gone back and tweaked these satellites at all. Sure, they drift a little bit, but never enough to really change the effectiveness of the relay network. And if you do want to go in there and tweak them, it actually isn't that bad of a thing to do, which neatly segues us into what our next video is going to be about. This was about doing this the easy way. Next week is going to be about doing it the hard way, having three independent satellites all in different places. How do we use what we've learned about orbital mechanics? to put these into the exact same orientation we're seeing here. It's going to be a fun one, and I hope to see you then.